welcome to where the furniture isn't always the best, but them views, they are amazing. amazing. Jones and I got the squad on today, man. Back to the basics, back to normalcy. Faison, we up with you, man. What's happening? I'm great, man. I am uh, good, as good as I can be. You know, with all the current climate out there, what's happening? Um, I am, I'm good as can be. I'm healthy. I'm trying to stay in my bubble, but also affect others around me. Um, but before we go on to, the, to anyone else, I want to make sure that everybody subscribes to the new channel. So if you're watching this. Uh, please subscribe on YouTube. We'd love to see that and hit a like for us. Back to you. There it is. BJ, what's going on, sir? All good, man. All good down here. There it is. Coach K, what's happening? Not much. What's going on? I don't know. I think the internet is not our friend today. What's not our friend? The the, the internet your connection internet. from your uh, your hotel room. <laughs> Oh, you're probably right. Um, that's what happens when you stay at Hilton. Oh, negative. <laughs> what's, up with the, what's up with the house, man? Um, man, you know, funny that you ask. Finally, um, after many, many weeks, um, we have secured a contract on the house. Um, it was beginning to look real bleak. I was gonna, about to start pulling some real um, covert tactics to make it happen because um, it was just crazy, man. The housing market is crazy right now. Uh, they just have uh, just just ridiculous. You know, low inventory plus low interest rates and greedy people just make it really bad for anybody mm -hmm. out there trying to buy it right now. Mm -hmm. But you got one in, so you, you waiting on the final okay or? Uh, no, I got one. I, I you know I already had a pre-approval and um, you know, made the offer and they accepted. Shout out to um, Mei Chang. That was their, um, you know, their agent. Shout out to my guy, Tom Peter. Mei Chang. Mei Chang yeah. Peter. My guy, Congrats, Peter, who, uh, my agent. So, yeah, man, we're doing this thing. Um, can't wait for y'all to come, you know, see everything and um, help move some stuff. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Let another weekend, man. Let's put the lamb on the grill, man, and we'll be there. I'm sure we got lamb. We gonna have brisket, all that good stuff. Fresh, you know, what's happening? Here? You know I'm there. You just call five on up. Oh yeah, are right, you right around the corner? Eh? Right around the corner. Art, he don't know what to do with himself, boy. He said, "Same city, we about to like cut up, boy." South <laughs> <laughs> Florida, let's go. Uh, I I, I haven't like, been boy. I haven't been the same place with anybody in a long time. So I, I am extremely excited. Um, one, uh, for, for Nambi, Renze, and Asher, that's that right there in itself is dynamic that, that I think is going to change super the game. Dope. Um, so that's that's really awesome. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I'm just super happy. I was, that's why I was always on his back riding, like, need any help? What can I do for you? Need me to go to the house? I got you. You can split up? You know, whatever. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we, are, we, we already started taking advantage of that. I went and um, babysat. Yep. Um, last weekend, so that uh, Art and EJ go celebrate their anniversary. Six years, um, That's beautiful. Congratulations, cool. sir! Thank you, thank you. I thought you congratulated me for babysitting. Um, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's exactly. It was what a wonderful was. time. <laughs> but but it was hilarious. You know, you know, man, just doing uncle stuff, man. I'm sitting here sending this man videos of Arenze falling asleep in the hot chat. <laughs> Why he's supposed to be eating? Yeah, fight. Uh, wear them out, man. Wear them out. <laughs> so how many years so, you got in the game, Mark? Six, six, six years. years. And I, to, I told, I told EJ, I said, um, I, I'll, I'm with you faithfully for another 90, 94. <laughs> After that, you on your own. Holla. <laughs> <laughs> well <Yeah>. said. Spaceship. <laughs> Fresh. What's going on on your end of the world, man? And we out here doing what we do, fresh the people, just living life, man. Another day. 
another struggle. What up? <laughs> <laughs> so who we publicizing today, man? Another dope patch you got on there. Oh, you know, this right here is another one. Fresh off the presses, Time is Enemy is the new brand. Um, yeah, man, this, this is uh, just one of the demos. Um, but yeah, y'all can expect this to be coming very soon. We got a whole, right now I'm calling it the GTA. Um, but I'm definitely going to change the name of it because it's kind of more of a, an action, black exploitation, you know, homage more uh with what we did with some of the characters and designs but uh real excited and definitely like i said time is enemy.com y'all go check that out go buy y'all song hey. john got this this real italia flavor to it with the red and green and oh yeah no, that's that classic close. stitch too right there that's that stitch no itch baby <laughs> <laughs> yeah nah it was just my screen don't worry about it carol i see you over there judging me right now man just calm down just calm down <laughs> we, we gonna get there I'll keep it to myself. I'll keep it to and myself. And I, I forgot to mention, this is a um, hemp hat. This is a hemp material right here. Oh, oh sure. you know, You know, we're doing big things. Nah, this is, this is you know. 100%. 100%, baby. I mean, mm. it says the plastic in the back. But yeah, man, I made sure. Um, and oh, don't let me lie. 55, 55%. 55%, 45%. do not let me lie. 55, it's, it's, it's cotton and hemp, baby. But it's mostly hemp, baby. Believe that. Put that in right smoke there. it. Mm, have fun with that. Yep, there it is, ladies and gentlemen. We are here on the 13th floor, man. Thank you all for joining us. We got a great podcast lined up for you today. Um, before we get into all of that, Fresh, you got to jump us off, man. Set the tone. Fresh ovation. What we got? You know, we moving this thing early so we can get y'all started off. Rizite. Uh, this week, I really wanted to go ahead and pop off on, on uh, you know, you, you get what you get. So what I give out returns to me. I give everyone I meet positive energy. I'm worthy of love and deserve to, be, to receive love in abundance. Others show me love. I attract loving and caring people into my life. I only attract healthy, loving relationships. I let go of fear. I let go of pain. I live in love. Um, point blank period, if, live in love. If you take the time to, to really Make sure as you move and navigate your day in your life that you are trying to push out positivity, especially in those hard times. You will find that your life is a lot better and you will attract a lot more of that positivity that you want to enjoy and infuse into your life. So each one, teach one, be positive and be what? Be fresh and baby, baby. I'll let you boy. Yes, sir. The power of positivity. I love that there. Um, I want to remember what you said. You get what you give. Uh, I think that's how you started that thing, man. We're going to come back to that a little bit later in the podcast. Uh, but right now, we definitely have to pay homage, give our respects. Uh, 2020 has just been a very unforgiving year as far as uh, the people who have passed on uh, from the likes of Kobe Bryant, John Lewis, and even those that have been impacted by the pandemic and those of you know lesser <clears throat> prominent names, uh, but have still gone on to better places and left this realm, this earth. Uh, but over the weekend, we found out about uh, good brother Chadwick Boseman um, that has passed on. And uh, we definitely want to pay respects, pay homage to that for everything that he did for the culture in a very short period of time. Um, even before Black Panther, which is, you know, his most epic film or most known film. But um, when I found out about the news and not even knowing that he was... <laughs> not even knowing that he was dealing with uh, <laughs> COVID. <laughs> hey, bad. man. Ashing this is next to cleaning up. We'll, we'll have that in the blooper reel. This episode of the 13th floor has been brought to you by Lumberderm. <laughs> <laughs> but no, man. Um, didn't had no idea he was struggling with uh, colon cancer or fighting colon cancer, um, but was still able to accomplish so many great things. Mm -hmm. And so we definitely want to pass that, uh, pass that forward. I know Carol, he dropped a video um, in the last couple of days uh, speaking about Chadwick. So we definitely want to give him that time, give, a, give ourselves that time and space here on the 13th floor. I would say that you know, it, it's, it's just funny. You, ne you just never know. You never know what somebody's going through. Um, by the same token, you never know how you can impact the world with a small amount of time. 
So Big here was somebody that just embodied, um, like when they say for the culture, if you think about it, every movie was pretty much for the culture. Mm. And just, he did it in a way that was just so humble, right? It was already something that was just humble, but then to know what he was going through uh, majority of that time. And it's, it's just funny because there are so many people that we make excuses for why we can't do this, why we can't do that, uh, myself included. Um, there are any of us on this podcast, there have been times where we made excuses for stuff and didn't get it out, didn't do it. Um, and here was somebody that uh, was struggling. Uh, one of his um, co-stars from The Five Bloods, uh, the gentleman that was on, uh, uh, he was on The Wire too, not, not, not the one that, you know, did the stuttering profanity, but the other gentleman, I can't remember oh, his name the, right now. Yeah, I know. I think I need to talk about I saw it. Mm-hmm. His wife, he was saying that his wife had asked him, hey, what was it like to work with Chadwick <clears throat> Boseman? You know, I really like him. And he was like, ah, you know, it seems like the Black Panther may have gotten to his head a little bit. You know, he's got, you know, his girlfriend with him. Um, he's got, Somebody giving him massages in between scenes and said a Chinese all this stuff. masseuse. That man said a Chinese masseuse <laughs> was was he's, right. He seemed like he, you know, he's a little spoiled. Pretty much is what he was saying. Um, and then in the interview, he was just like, "Man, I had no idea that his brother had cancer, and we were in over a hundred degree weather." Mm-hmm. And just to think about it now, it was amazing that he's even out there with us. Um, and he was doing everything he could to make sure that he completed the movie. Right. And and it's just crazy. Once again, you never know what somebody's going through. And then two, um, the commitment that he had to making and putting his craft out there. So uh, in my video on, on IG, it was basically just like, man, what, what, what could any one of us do with that level of commitment? And what, what could you commit to at that level in a small period of time and get results? So uh, I know one of the things we talked about is putting out a challenge. Still haven't quite figured out that challenge. I, w- I want it to be impactful. I want it to be meaningful um, and it to have something that it can move a large number of people in a small amount of time. So be on the lookout for that. That should be out soon. It might, maybe it'll be out by the time the podcast drop, but definitely we, we need to push that and do something because that, that's just a, such an example that was there for us that I think it deserves um, immediate reverence and not wait for somebody to, you know, a year from now or two years now to create something. I, I think, you know, there's just so much that we could do off of that. I think, um, well, I was I was so impressed by the fact that I think they said even during Black Panther, this man had a new body and nobody else knew. Like, I am so impressed by keeping that a secret to so many people. I remember seeing the pictures of him looking, you know, frail, mm-hmm. um, about you know six seven months ago to me though it was like it must be a role or something he's coming up for like it, right. i had i had no thoughts of sickness or anything else even though in hindsight you look at him like damn he, he looks sick but it was never any thought of that i think one of the um i actually had a moment of feeling depressed of never getting to meet him after hearing so many different people talk about him and especially talk about like how how focused he was, but how good a dude he was, and, and just like his whole thinking about it in the context of knowing you're dying that whole time, it's just a um, it's a hell of a story, man. It's a hell of a story. And, and I don't know if I can think of another actor who has played more historic figures right. for us ever. Like, I don't, I don't think there's another person who has played more. Back to back to back, like it's just yeah, insane. and I mean, like in such a short period, 
he, he played Jackie Robinson. He played James Brown. He played um, who else? Third Grade Marshall. There you go. That was good too. It's a great movie. Yeah. And yeah, all, all of them, all of them were good movies. movies. That that's that's yeah. the thing. It wasn't like they were, you know, random one offs or something like. Right. All of them were really good movies. That it's and I don't know if you guys saw. He has a movie on. It was on Netflix where he's like a. Uh, uh, like African detective that came to don't America give, to don't try give, to find. Don't give away the movie, but yeah, it's called A Message from the King. There you go. That that joint is dope too. Where it's like yep. he's he's got an amazing body of work, especially and that was his that was his prep movie for Black Panther. Oh wow! Ah. Yeah, okay. he he did that movie because he wanted to see if he could make a whole movie where he spoke in a different accent. Think about that, like just that alone. And then you think about how how much of an African accent he had to come from South Carolina. Right. Wow. It's, it's, yeah, it's just like, I, I always thought he was a, um, well, early on, I thought he was like one of the British invaders who are all these <laughs> British actors come <laughs> over now and they're, you know what I mean, another Idris Alba type stuff. But then it's like, nah, buddy from South Carolina, he's been here forever. That is, um, right. The comments by uh, Michael B. Jordan and, oh, and him man. talking about it. Like he wrote, it was almost like a poem the way that he wrote it because he kept on putting in there, I wish we had more time. Like he'd make a statement and then put like, I wish we had more time. But like seeing there how um, it wasn't like that was the first time they kicked it together for Black Panther. You know what I mean? Like he said he knew him since he was 17. Wow, really? Oh, that's yeah, dope. like it, there was a lot. There was a lot. I oh, mean, oh, he there's, was there's um, a lot. Alicia Rashad like um helped him a lot. Uh Denzel Washington paid for like his college secretly that he didn't even know about till way later. Like I just saw um when he Man. won the award for MTV award for best action hero he the and the award up. to Buddy who um had saved the like there was a gunman who ran into us place and that black dude stopped yeah. him. He gave you know, the award to that dude. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Um yeah, so he he was on a soap opera and whatever they wanted the character to do, Chadwick Boseman was like, "Nah, can we add some more positivity to this character? Um, you know, I I don't feel comfortable continuing to to portray this character this way." And they basically told him, "Okay, well then you can kick rocks." So he kicked rocks and Michael B Jordan ended up playing a role. I was oh, going to wow. say, Michael B. Jordan was on the soap opera. That's where he got it going. Yeah. That's he, funny, he started bro. off rough in his career. That, yeah, that makes, wow. Principles. But he ended up made it. Fresh, you mentioned that, um, that Denzel Washington thing. It's funny because when we found out about it, I was talking to Chris and kind of comparing him in the same right to Denzel because of all of the diamond, dynamic roles mm. that he had played thus far. He was crossing genres seemingly everywhere. And uh, I had no idea that he was a Howard graduate and that Denzel had paid, uh, you know, paid his way through school or whatnot. So, um, you know, just all of those connections, I just, it's, it sucks to be, to have something like that taken away seemingly so soon when you feel like they have so much more to do and so much more to give. Like he was definitely a rising figurehead amongst a lot of rising stars in black entertainment. Um, but it's funny that, that we're, we're saying he was a, rising star and a rising figurehead yeah. and he was 40 uh we're the same age actually 43 so like, even on, even I had on no that, idea he was like, that old either he's he 43 but again it's like it's like a lot of reflection over the years but again none of us know how long we're gonna be here for right mm -hmm. um but i go back to what carol was saying what well, we've all been stating about past what are you doing with the time while you're here mm, right like the things that could have been done, yeah, we can already predict. But what about the legacy and the 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 stance that he took while he was here, man? The things that he did um, in that quote unquote short period of time, what we think is a short period of time, right? Because um, we always anticipate things on on average lifespan, going living sixty plus years, and and all the things we could have did later on in life. But all the things we could do, what about the stuff we didn't do when we were here? And I, I think that fact that, again, we talked about all these movies he portrayed in the last few years, um, building up to the role to play Black Panther um, and just be that breakout icon 
for the world, man. I, I, you can't even say that at that point in time, yes, for the black community, but that character, that movie was a statement for the world and across the world. Um, even that, that night when his, I think his publicist, whoever put out the tweet, um, Gina has shown me later on in the night that like, it was the most liked tweet ever in a matter of a few hours. Wow. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Like that was the impact. Like of all the stuff going on in the world right now, as most like tweet ever about this man passing. Um, Listen, it, was, yeah, so it was crazy. It was crazy because um it was Twitter and I believe it was IG as well. And it was from his account. Yeah. And I was just like, wait, what? <laughs> like, did yep. somebody hack yep. this man's stuff? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. How is this going on? Um, so can I can I blow y'all minds real quick though? Yeah. Blow it. Um, if you go back, I don't know, three, four months now, remember my Black Panther randomly was broken? Uh-huh. Hey, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Bad on me. Crazy. Bad on me. That's wild. That's wild. Um, so, Black Panther, how do you think they proceed? Do they? I've, I've heard two super well. One is cool. It's dope, mm-hmm. you know, to to use um his sister as the you know she's she's now getting revenge for his death, has some type of way that he passes, and now she's getting revenge for his death. But then I, I heard another dope one where they use the no, stones not, to bring back. Not, it's not dope at all. Why is that not dope? <laughs> <laughs> not dope at all. Well, 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 let's, Why you don't want to bring back a that, kill that actually that actually happened. I mean, they can totally reuse all of his. Like, they can do the Princess Leia thing and, and bring him back into the fold. But uh, no, they, Killmonger. Not yeah, no. Oh, they want to bring Killmonger back and bring him back as a good guy. Yeah, oh. he would be the Black Panther. I don't know. No, he's always been a bad guy. He never wore the. He never had the the um, the mantle. But Sh- Shuri has had it. His sister. Has been the Black Panther, so they can the spin comics, that. Yes. Yeah, they can spin that. They're working on the Iron Heart, Iron Heart for Iron Man too. So they can kind of do that whole bring in the gender change thing for it. So it's possible to do. Um, but yeah, and that's going to be a hard rewrite. Hard. Oh, you <laughs> because, know, it's already like that, that was already just like yeah, already still. You know, they had that movie pretty much done. I wouldn't be surprised right. if there was already screen testing. Everything else, like I'm sure they had that it already. Out, it was supposed out. to come out in February, wasn't it? Yeah, like February, next March, year. next year. I want so. it. Well, fuck two years from now. Yeah, two years. They, 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 back. they, yeah. so they didn't start filming yet. The filming didn't start. It's still writing it, but Brett had it. a question. Well, because you know I don't keep up with the Marvel universe. So hey, last time, th- last time I saw Black Panther, he was like disintegrated. Uh, but that was in, I think, the one of the first last Avenger movies. So yeah, I don't so know. Last it was the last. Movie. It was two, two two movies ago. Yeah. So I don't know if he got brought back or not. But I remember mm-hmm. reading. Okay, so I remember reading somewhere along in the comic book line that he actually does pass away or something like that. So couldn't they just like run that story and? Yeah, I mean, all the all the um, Black Panthers go into the um, they go to the paradise and they're all there. So it's a. I mean, they could, that would take like a future kind of bring him back. They might have to jump to the future, which they could go to the quantum realm, bring him back from the future, which they want to bring him back. They could do something with it. And Marvel it's, has it's supposed to be to like, them. um, are they normally the sons though, right? Um, no, 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 anybody no, who, no. anybody who, who well, fight for the, well yeah. yes, historically. Yeah. But we don't, we don't get to see that history. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, I can't remember if he, I don't think he died. Like something else happened, and Shuri ended up taking over. And the black something. Yeah, I don't remember exactly mm-hmm. what it was, but yeah. Mm-hmm. And then she goes on, and then something else happens. She becomes the Grio, and he comes back. Because then he like yeah. go off out into the wind with Storm. I mean, we ain't gotta get all the way into all of that stuff. That was that was the whole next thing that we're going to do. That whole thing where they got married and and did the whole and bringing the X Men. Like that was all part of their rollout. And now it's gonna you gotta keep them in or not bring in Storm. It's just, it's just gonna be tough. For those of us who have no idea what's going on in this conversation, I'm right there. <laughs> right there. I, nerd yeah. out. I love this part. This, this is when nerdy can come out. Now, I think the, now, the real question okay. Well, I was going to say, I think the real question is, is whether or not they find somebody else to fill that role, kind of how they did, uh, what was that, Spartacus, I think, where they got the random well, dude. <laughs> let's yeah, talk Spartacus. about yeah. They, well, before you do that, they can definitely fill roles because technically War Machine was filled and no one cared. 
<laughs> when, uh, when they change. I'm about order. to say. I don't think, but I think it's too different. It's like, yeah, it's, like yeah, it's like, it's like, yo, it's, it's, it's character, one yeah. thing to do him as opposed to like, yo, if they would have replaced Robert Downey for Iron Man, niggas would have been going crazy. You know right. what I mean? Whoa, as opposed yeah. to mm -hmm. that, like, that's the way that you have to think about it. It's like, yo, if Captain America was somebody else. People are definitely going to be like, hey, but wait a minute. What? In, in this situation, I don't, I, not only this situation, but this age, we are such uh, a fickle community of, <laughs> of, of like, yo, like, we are going to get on everybody. So, oh, my God, I can't believe that you did this. Da, 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 da. And it's going to just now, become a thing. Now, if they're now, going here's to one. Here, here's one. And, and I'll give uh, Wendy. Wendy came up with this one. It was her idea. And I think everybody would feel good about it. And it would come full circle if Denzel Washington's son was to oh. take up the role. Oh wow! Mm. So I've only seen him in Black Klansman, I believe. You ain't never watched Ballers? No. Nah. Wow, that was a good show. Hmm, that's interesting. Yeah, that's and definitely when, interesting. And when you look at him, like he he looks like he. That's can, what he, I, I never yeah. ever had that as a thought, but you saying it and like starting to think about him, like whoa. Well, Hmm. Yeah, I mean, right. I don't doubt that he could do it. I just, I've only seen him in that Black Klansman role, so yeah, he's got a yeah. movie out right now that came out, I think, last yep. week. It's called Ten Tenant. That's, yep. that's yep. him in there. Yeah, that's yep. him. Oh, okay, I check that out. Um, one thing I wanted to go back to uh, that I think we might have skipped over in all of that conversation was the impact that he left and leaving it all on the table. So like I think BJ mentioned it, um, you never know when you're gonna go, but where you currently are right now, if you got hit by a bus tomorrow, mm -hmm. have you left that impact or have you done or left it all on the table? I think that's really important because a lot of the you know, prominent figures that we've lost this year, you know, kind of like out of nowhere, even though they had so much more in our minds, so much more to give the Kobe's, the John Lewis's, you know, of, of, of the, and like, they have lived a full lives and touched those they needed to touch and have done those things that, you know, they were pretty much sent here to do in one way, shape, uh, one way, shape, form or another. So go ahead, Kay, you look like you're ready to go on that. No, I was just going to say, um, let's not forget John Thompson as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The yeah. former yeah. Georgetown basketball coach. Yes, exactly. Now, I wasn't the most familiar with John Thompson, but through a lot of conversations in a bunch of different groups, I saw the, uh, yeah, I saw the, the legacy that he, that he left. So, again, leaving it all on the table, you know, looking at your situation, your life right now, and just figuring that, you know, have I done all that I can do and, and moving in that light or getting closer to that, I would say. Yeah. And, and again, if you think about it, he didn't do, uh, and that's when I say he, I'm talking about Chadwick Bozeman. He didn't do really do anything outside of the platform that he was given. Right. He took that same platform of acting and made this huge impact. And I think a lot of, a lot of people feel like, oh, well, if I wasn't doing this, I'd be great, you know. And in a lot of cases, you can do exactly what you're doing and be great at it and, and, and make a huge impact. Yeah. 100%. I think it's – um. I was very on the line. And, and ironically, I haven't watched the NBA in, like, the last six years, probably, like, for real – and wasn't necessarily planning on watching this season. I think partially because it really isn't anything else to watch, I feel. Mm -hmm. But, you know, kind of exhausted on, on all Netflix and everything. But started watching the season. A, the playoffs have been really good as far as basketball goes. But I, B, I've been thoroughly impressed with their um, usage of their platform to still communicate the main message. And that even though at the end of the day, it's their job, right? And so, like, I can understand you need to go get a check. And I actually respect, like, if you watch the interviews, these cats are 
dodging interviews, not dodging, but like cutting, like there's no talking about, man, you just dropped 50 points. How do you feel about this game? I want to talk about Breonna Taylor. I want to talk about, you know, they are taking it directly there. They are not having, you know, um, oh, let's praise each other. Like they are keeping it, uh, shoes, jerseys, everything is, you know, making sure it's in your face that it's it's that same thing. Taking the the the, the cards pretty much you are dealt and, and playing the best hand instead of complaining about the fact that you don't have four pocket aces. You know, like you have to deal with, your situation in the best light. And just like I was saying at the beginning, what, what you what you give is what you get. If you're going to steady slump around and, and feel like, oh, man, if, if only I would have, you know, done this before or if I was over there and I was doing that, like, no, you have to do the best at what you're doing currently in order to, to progress to what where you're supposed to be. And nine times out of ten, it's nowhere near the destination you expected However, it is directly in the pocket that you need to be to, to, to leave the true legacy that you want to. Fresh, I'm absolutely, I'm just ecstatic that you said that, man, because that brings me back. How, how dope is the NBA and the NBA players for taking the stance that they have taken and, gotten the, and getting the results that they got based on that walk-off for, I think, maybe two days or whatnot, mm-hmm. literally overnight? I mean... NFL, like NFLPA, take notes. You know, you had the MLB and all these other organizations that kind of joined suit. But like, that's 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 the power. It's it's been amazing watching them. It's one of those things where, uh, again, it's only the time that we are in right now. Who even knows if they would have been the, you know, if this would have resonated the same way had there not just been COVID. You know, mm-hmm. take away, you know, all of these, you know, unjust murders. If there would have just not been COVID, if this would have still been the situation, that it's always, you know, um, all of these, you know, different events coming together and creating, you know, this opportunity for, you know, these moments where, again, I feel like I'm seeing the players play more passionately, but I also feel like they feel they're playing for a bigger thing now than just playing basketball. And, and it just being a job because they are having the opportunity. Like you listen to them um, while the games are going on and they're talking about how the players like over that period of, of being um, sitting out that the discussions were around, look, all right, if we're going to, if we're going to go ahead and sit out now, we're going to stop playing ball. Right. You guys need to be on the, like, are you going to be on the front line of these marches? Are you going to be like active in your communities doing this stuff? Because if you're if you're saying you're, we're not going to play ball and then you're going to go home and sit down and not do nothing, it, it's stupid. It's foolish. It makes more sense for us to utilize our platform to continue to make sure that the message we convey is about what we want and what we need. And so that was kind of like the the just and the crux of what made them say, okay, we're going to go back in here and clock in, but we're going to continue to make sure that the that the the message is heard and that the message is is screamed and yelled continuously and over and over again. And it's not just on their jerseys, it's not just you know the commentators talking about it. It's not just them talking about it afterwards, and the, it's like all over. And it's it's really shoot. Um, Kenny Smith walked off of um yeah TNT the day that mm-hmm. it happened instead of like he was so like I don't even know what to do, but I got to I'm walking out, and so yeah. he he left too. That it's it's awesome to see people, and especially a lot of times athletes are very um kind of shy with the, the um, you know, the power they possess in a sense to be a role model. And it's always awesome to see them to be able to embrace it and put it in such a, a, um, a good light and still, you know, show like, hey, at the end of the day, they're doing just like Carol said, you know, they're doing the best at what they, they are here to do, but they're also allowing it to be able to, you know, keep that bigger message going and to, to use it to make a real point. On, that was there was one of them that happened Saturday afternoon. Um, we had um, church service Saturday night, um, and it was at least one verse that stuck out to me, and it was important because I, I highlighted it and I want to go back, but it's like fitting right now. Um, First Peter four ten, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. Now, no matter what you believe in, we're, we're talking about. Um, 
the gift, the natural talents that you have. Don't let it go to waste. Don't let um, the natural talents, the gifts, the, the, the abilities you have to, to go away just by doing, just by letting it go and not, not serving others, not, not serving a purpose. Again, we talk about the NBA players. They're serving, uh, they're serving a purpose using their platform to get the message across. Like Ian just discussed, like they could have easily sat and said, we're not going to play whatever. Um, we're going to do this or we're going to go back. But again, how do you use your gift, your platform to still serve and, and support everything that's going on? You go back to Chadwick. All the things he did, all the speeches he gave, and they're playing back now. And you hear the little gems that he dropped here and there. They're playing that Howard speech over and over again, the Howard graduation speech over and over again. There were so many gems he dropped, people just weren't paying attention to it because they weren't, it wasn't at the time to hear it. But now, after he's gone, they're replaying that stuff, and his words are going to live on forever. How are you going to impact and leave that legacy for yourself? That's, that's the challenge right there. What are you going to do today to use your gift, to use your talents, to serve others, to, to love on others, to make sure that the world is a better place because you live here. Somebody else is better off because you, you, you were here. And if you can't do that, then what are we really doing with our time? Because it's not about self, right? We get in that rut of, of what was me, what was me? No, we, all these people could have said, what was me a long time ago and just dropped the ball, right? But well, we're in a better place because they serve, they use their talents, they use their platform to, to get the message out, get the word out, support other, love on others. So that it just came full circle right now. I'm just sitting here listening. I'm like, that's exactly what the verse was saying. It's how it works, right? It's not how it works. It's not, it's not when it happens. It's when you get, when you get it. Correct. Yeah. Big facts. Man. What I'll add to that is staying out of the microcosms and looking at what's going on around us and, and seeing the examples. So, you know, taking that NBA example, uh, another example of taking the power that you have to wield, not being stuck in the microcosm. Now, the NBA is a completely different animal when it comes to, you know, those organizations as far as social change is concerned. They don't really, it's, it's nothing like the NFL and it is nothing like America as we know it. Um, but even so, as much as the NBA does and continues to do, and as much as these p players have continued to ask and use their platforms to inspire change, create change, create voting, uh, polling places and voting places for people to get out and, you know, exercise their right to vote. Knowing and understanding the power that you or we collectively as individuals can wield when we come together uh, collectively it is very important. And this is just a prime e example of that, especially on the, the heels of where we are in time and how we're you know, getting closer and closer to this election. Social, uh, civil and social unrest is at an all time high, um, higher than it's ever been, you know, reaching you know, early civil rights you know, numbers and feelings. What can you or we do collectively to get involved and be a part of whatever change that we want to see, whether it's in our, our homes, in our communities, whatever, just taking, taking that example and utilizing and wielding that power? You, you raise a good point. And it is amazing to watch the reactions of some people to what the NBA is doing. Um, it's amazing to watch them develop a new level of hate for LeBron mm -hmm. and to see people actually saying that he's spoiling the NBA. He has ruined the NBA with his political stance and um, his, uh, uh, what's his voter program? He has a voter program that's out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, one way to help him to pay the fines for the felons. It's pretty much like another voter dying. Mm -hmm. Right. No, not even the pay the thing for the felons. What they're doing now is they have actually enlisted all of the arenas for all of the, the teams. Oh, yeah, that too. Are now yeah. going to be voter places to go. Well, that's, you know, that's, that's what the NBA agreed that's, to Yeah, that's part of the NBA part, um, yeah. Which, which I, I have a challenge. I don't know who's out there who could do something with it, but all these dead shopping malls that are around the country, why can't we use them mm. as polling places? Because Amazon is using them as they hugs. And okay. Okay. Well, hey, Jeff Bezos, why why can't you give up some of that mall space 
for they to be for them to be used as polling places where people could safely socially distance and still get out and vote. Um, just something to put out there. But it's just, the number of people that just want to maintain the status quo, um, just out of pure selfishness and position and um, a, a a safeguard for their privilege, just amazes me. Um, it is it is ridiculous, and it is going to take people across multiple platforms, across multiple, um, you know, race lines, whatever you want to call it, money lines, um, to change it. And it has to change. It can't continue to be this way. And it is going to take people, as we've been saying through the whole show, you've got to take whatever position you're in and you've got to use it. And unfortunately, I'll tell you for corporate America, for the educational system, for many things, people just don't feel safe coming out and making those types of stances. And I think in many different arenas, people are trying to drive diversity and inclusion and have no clue what to do with it. No clue. They're not ready for that conversation, really. They're not really ready for the conversation and they're not ready to allow people to feel comfortable standing up Mm-hmm. and making yep. real change and until they do that we're going to continue to be in this just what do we do next situation so what do we do next coach k tune in next week <laughs> <laughs> right? we'll go get somebody with an answer uh, <laughs> no, I, I think i think i just said it You have to make people feel safe putting their opinions out there. I mean, the unpopular opinions, right? Because people need to understand doing what's right isn't always going to be what's popular. Mm -hmm. It's not always going to be what has been. It can be something totally different. Um, And until you protect, one, make those people feel safe, and then two, protect them from the people that don't want to tolerate something different, we're going to be right here in the same space. Now, the, the, the same things happen right now in the streets where they're talking about, you know, the, 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 the riots, and I'll say riots because the, the protests are happening and how they're making it smack what it was. This happened back during civil rights where they were saying, why are they doing this? They shouldn't be out there now. They shouldn't be doing it. So all this is, is kind of, if you don't go against the system, and when you do, then people will call you out for those things and say you're doing something crazy, but you're not. You're just challenging what's the status quo. So you're always going to have the opposition on the other end, and it's how you maintain and say it doesn't matter. We're going to move forward. Allows that change to happen. Then we'll Check look back out. now at this time frame. We'll look back in 20 years back to this point in time and say all that was for this, but they stop now. You lose that. Check this out. In any other country when there is civil unrest, their economy falls to nothing. It falls to crap. (laughs) Here, here in the United States, we have all this civil unrest going on. We have this pandemic going on and somehow the economy is surging. Mm -hmm. How backwards is that? It's a message in there, ladies and gentlemen. If you're listening, that's, that's a conversation. That's that's a conversation for another day. We're gonna cut that there. Um, before we get up out of here, man, I want to remind everybody that you can get this podcast on iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, Spotify, iHeartRadio, YouTube, the Vimeo. Thanks, Fresh, for the reminder every week, bro. Um, make sure you're following us at 13th Floor, please, on all your social media platforms. Uh, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Art's going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. Subscribe to the podcast. Let us know what you're thinking. Uh, each and every week, uh, we, we hear giving the, the black male a voice. Um, if you missed us last week, we had a great episode with Black Owned DC and Green Dentistry talking about uh, businesses and green dentistry actually being uh, becoming operational even in the midst of the pandemic and the different strategies that they took to get there. So you definitely want to check that out as well. 
um, with all of the tidbits about the black owned businesses and how we can actually support black owned businesses in the midst of this pandemic and some things that black owned businesses should look at to pivot and transition themselves so that, you know, they don't fall victim to the alarming statistic of, our, of the 45 or 50 percent of businesses that are having to close their doors. So we here each and every week, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm going to turn it over to Faison to give his corner. BJ got something to say. He got the finger up and then Coach K is going to close us out. But I'm going to go to I, BJ first. Go ahead, I don't want to interrupt the closing out, but for all anybody who's watching right now, Again, another conversation that we've already had on the podcast, not to get the episode number, um, we had Dr. Benjamin Young on. Um, I, I forget what number it was right now. Oh, it, it's up top. Don't worry. It's, it's right there. All right. But we, we, talk, we talked about health of black men and things like the colonoscopy and, and him being in, in his field. I need anybody, if you have a black male in your life that you care about, send them the link to that episode and let them listen to it all the way through. Um, again, we talked about, we didn't get it in the medical piece, but the colonoscopy, um, having things checked out for black males, it's a, a younger age than prescribed by a lot of insurance companies and recommended by out there. He goes over all that information. Um, Chad was 43 years old, man. Mm -hmm. Like by, by, by the rules and the numbers out there, statistically, he shouldn't have fell in that category. But there's always somebody who's gonna fall in, right? Um, because and he, they say he, he had it for, for for four years, so that means yeah. he actually probably got di diagnosed at 39. So and they told me this thing checked at 40 is was was what the prescribed age was. So in actuality, no, the prescribed age was is is 45. For, for black males, they're saying go lower. Because and again, that's what I want anybody. If you have a black male in your life, I don't care who you are, that you care about, you need to go listen to the episode with Dr. Benjamin Young. Um, and, and pull up, ask questions. His information is in there. Send him questions. Send us questions related to him. Um, health, man. You can't, yes. you can't serve your platform if you're not healthy. Episode 158. Thank you, sir. Thank you. There it is. There it is. We on you, Faison. What you got for the corner this week? You know what? This, this time, uh, I think I'm just going to pay respect to, to everyone we've lost um, through violence and through just natural causes uh, this time around. So for this corner, I'm just gonna take a silence for 30 seconds and just let it be. There it is. Rest in power, everybody. Everybody rest in power. Appreciate that, Faison. Appreciate that. Coach K. I want to come off. Yeah, fresh, fresh did go already. Um, wow. <laughs> so I get to follow the moment of silence. I'll tell you guys a story. So yesterday or a few days ago, by the time this podcast comes out. I just got back to the hotel uh, from getting something to eat. I'm walking through the lobby. I see this gentleman. That I don't know what he's doing. He's checking in, whatever he's doing. Um, and I'm trying to hurry up and get to the elevator because, again, social distancing. Um, so, hey, buddy, you, you catch the next elevator. Well, he hurries up over there. Oh, hold that. Hold the elevator. So, anyway, buddy gets in the elevator. Um, I guess he could tell from the look on the fa on my face and the fact that I had on a mask um, that he needed to be on the far other side of the elevator. So he did. And don't ask me why. I don't know why it was just, it was just a long trip to the third floor. And he, he goes, uh, so what do you do professionally for a living? And I'm just like, oh, what? <laughs> And then the elevator opened and I said, oh, 
um, I work for the automotive industry. And he's like, oh, okay. And I was just like, all right. But then it hit me as soon as I walked out of the elevator. There are so many people that have the mindset of they do something professionally for a living. You do not do something professionally for a living, right? For a living. The thing that you do for your life and for living is the purpose that you serve and the gift that you were put here to put out into the world. What you do professionally is just a platform that hopefully you make it to. Preach. <laughs> thank you, thank you from the, from the, from the choir. <laughs> but don't mistake your profession for who you are and what you do and what gives you life. What gives you life and gives meaning to your life and brings impact from your life is that thing that nobody else can do like you. It's that Chadwick Boseman thing that there's not going to be anybody else to come along. It's that John Thompson that comes along and he has Patrick Ewing, the Kembe Mutombo, Alonzo Mourning, Allen Iverson. That thing that you do that lifts other people up and nobody else gives them it. That's that thing that gives you life. That, that thing, that's the thing that gives your life meaning, not your profession. Stop letting your profession be the thing that you, that you let define you. That's not what you do for a living. Go out there and find the thing that you do for a living and do that thing consistently well. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. We are done here on the 13th floor where the furniture isn't always the best, but the views are amazing. 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 amazing.